Hi. Welcome to the Python course authored by the Crowd Course Initiative. Today I will be teaching you good coding practices and what's not recommended while you code in Python. Let's go through the quick overview of what we will be covering today. Let's cover a few of the naming conventions, indentation styles, comments, exceptions and errors, and what are the few programming recommendations used while you code in Python. Naming fundamentals. On the left, you see a column that says to stay away from. And on the right, we, we shall discuss a few of the things that you can use instead. ID or PK. This is something Python expects us to stay away from. If you're so tempted to use ID, you could use instead ID underscore or user underscore ID. It's the same way with zip. You could use zip code or postal code. And if you're using main, you should be going for main underscore. And if it's class, you should be instead going for class underscore or class underscore subjects. So what's the difference here? And why are we stressing this? The above variables that you see on your left are those that are part of the Python's API. What can be done here instead is to go for what is given on the right. There are plenty of other variables you can think of, such as iter, map, true, false. If you're using an editor such as Sublime or PyCharm, you can in fact see that your variables will be highlighted a different color if it corresponds to those in API. So lesson number one. Avoid having main variables that are part of the API. Naming styles. Let's go through a few naming styles that we should be using and what we should not be using. Single case naming or short names to conserve pixels or even identifying a variable with its type doesn't really help readability or maintenance. As you see here, we have ICJO or INDCLR, Boolean. That really doesn't help. Instead, we could use something like index or color or is active, like long, readable, unambiguous variable names. Capital words with underscore. No, that's not a very good idea. This makes it look really ugly. Instead, we could go for something like camel casing or first letter initials with no sp underscores or spaces or with lower words with underscore. Third, let's go for reverse notation. Instead of having names like completed underscore course or pending course or inactive course, we could go for course completed or what's course pending. This makes it more readable and understandable for the user. Lesson number two, readability, that's priority. Taming your Python naming. Taming your na naming style from the beginning is a great idea to start you on with good coding techniques. So let's learn it right the first time. Packages, modules, functions, methods, variables are all used in Python in lowercase with underscores. Constants. They are written with all uppercase with underscores. Classes and exceptions are with having the initial words in caps with no spaces or underscores. That is, you have the initial letter of your word in caps with no space in between. Protected methods and internal functions are usually declared with single leading underscores. Private methods, double leading underscores. Lesson number three. Spelling makes even Python look beautiful. Indentation and spacing. This is kind of very tricky. So did right the first time. You are very lucky. Spaces are always preferred to tabs. Python does not allow usage of tabs and spaces together. So this is one common error which every Python beginner 
makes and eventually get stuck at that line of code, not knowing what went wrong. Secondly, let's not have very long lines. Having up to 79 characters per line improves readability and makes coding easier than having to scroll sideways in a window. Wrap up using black slashes, so if you have long lines, you could go for backslashes and that makes reading easier and less scrolling. Having too much code all crunched up makes things look really complicated. So surround functions with blank lines making the code look much more lighter. Finally, styling doesn't mean aligning all equal to symbols or columns in a vertical column. So surrounding variable names, columns arrays square brackets with many white spaces is not really recommended. Use white spaces sparingly to make things more clear and readable. Lesson number four. Avoid mixing tabs and spaces. Use white spaces appropriately. Comments. With respect to comments, we will be covering two things. Comments in general and more specifically dog strings. The principle behind Python is that code is often more read than written. So if you have a code that explicitly says what it's going to do, there is no need for long ambiguous comments. You could use instead short methods as a replacement to those comments. For example, you could use if is stop sign then stop instead of writing if sign dot color is equal to red and then giving a comment if the sign is a stop sign. You could also give comments like okay there's a bug in my code you need to fix it or you have a 2D code. So why is the code working and how it is working? So lesson number five keep comments short and crisp. Doc strings Doc strings explain how to use the code and are for the users of the code. On your left, you'll see some kind of comments written between the codes. On your right, you see some piece of code which is more clear and even you can understand it just by reading it. Uses of doc string is to explain the purpose of the function even if it seems obvious to you because it might not be obvious to someone else later on. So, describe the parameters that are expected, the return values, and any exceptions raised. If the method is tightly coupled with a single caller, make some mention of the caller. So, lesson number six, comment legibly. Our next part of doc strings deals with one-liners for code commenting. Here you see a piece of code snippet that says commenting that says function a b gives list you should be using instead do something and return a list so triple quotes are used even though string fits in one line this makes it easier for later users to expand the comment the doc string is a phrase that ends in a period it prescribes the function or method's effect as a comment do this, return that, not as a description. So, lesson number seven, keep to one-liners for method comments that are short and crisp. Our next section deals with errors and exceptions. You should be staying away from generic overarching exceptions. For example, you see a code snippet here that raises an exception and then just finally passes it. It's like you have no idea what your system is doing. It's better not to have this in your piece of code. You should be using instead specific exception clauses where your method actually raises an exception, a known exception, and that is actually being caught and raised and passed appropriately. While naming exceptions, name them as you would name classes, suffixing with an error. So, lesson number eight, raise specific exceptions. Recommendations. 
Let's go through some very good recommendations we should be using and what we should be staying away from. Let's look at this piece of code snippet. Foo is a list and to iterate of the list we are using zip, range and length. You should be using enumerator instead. It's a good technique to use that rather than having to zip, range and the length and then loop through. It's always good to memorize the built-in Python techniques for efficient coding and makes your code a lot easier to read. Flipping the booleans is not a very good idea. Go for not of true or false to get what you need. Use is not operator rather than not is. While both the expressions are functionally identical, the former is more readable and preferred. So you could be going for if item is not none, then going for if not item is none. Being consistent with written is always a good idea. So if you have nothing to written, just give us written none. Using similar codes for string, either single or double, and not mixing them helps to keep consistency. So if you have strings inside strings, you could be using um, single codes for the outer strings and double codes for the inner strings, or vice versa. It's best not to compare boolean variables to true or false or to check if that variable has some content by looking for the length. Like you see here, if length of present or if not length of present, if present is true, just let's just avoid that. You could instead be going for if present or if not present to check the presence and content of the variable. Lesson number 9. Let's learn Python the right way. With that, we have come to the end of this lesson and thanks for watching. But before we end, lesson number 10. Have fun coding in Python. See you soon.